join Gerald today in the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop as he builds a schoolmaster's bookcase. The Appalachian Heritage Woodshop is brought to you by Christian Internet Services. Common Sense Internet Marketing and Web Design. Our Internet Marketing Commissions are based on results. Robinson and Mackle, thinking business, practicing law. Waterlock's unique tongue oil and resin blend stains, sealers, and finishes. The go-to finish for wood enthusiasts since 1910. The Appalachian area is comprised of 13 eastern states covering 205,000 square miles of rugged, mountainous terrain. It stretches from New York to Mississippi, with West Virginia being the only state totally encased in the area. When this region was first settled, the immigrants had to travel over the Appalachian mountain range with only what they could carry or haul by wagons. They would make furniture and other wooden items that were necessary and functional. Until the early 1900s in rural Appalachia and elsewhere, more men than women were teachers and taught only when other activities like farming and hunting didn't demand their attention. Students would walk for miles to meet in a small one-room schoolhouse to learn reading, writing, and arithmetic. Books such as the McGuffey Reader Series, which was originally copyrighted in 1879, and the Bible were valuable commodities and care was taken to preserve them in sturdy bookcases. This is Gerald Vance with the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. I'm in the Old Field Schoolhouse in Jackson County, West Virginia. It's actually Cedar Lakes Conference Center. And I'm with Margie Parsons. What can you tell me about this old schoolhouse? The retired teachers wanted to show the new uh, modern children what it was like to go to school in a one-room schoolhouse. Also notice a bookcase over here. I'd like to look oh, at that. Oh, yes. This was, uh, came from the Centennial School that was on Sycamore Road over at Ripley, and it was donated by a lady that grew up in that area. Her name is, was Rilla Skeens. Rilla Skeens. She's actually my sixth grade school teacher, actually. Now, the old schoolhouse... Uh, was built in 1876? So, yeah, I think so, 1876, okay. somewhere along there. Now, this came out of the schoolhouse. Now, I don't believe this is from the 1800s, but it is still very old. I notice it's got some real nice construction. It does have nails, so it was nailed together. It's got some nice hand molding on it. I like the old hardware. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I noticed, the panel in the middle, instead of being inset in the style and rail is actually applied to the back of the door. So that's yeah. rather unusual. A lot easier to do, I'm sure. That it way, it was much, much easier. And then because that's applied to the back of the door, they had to notch the shelves to allow room for that panel. Mm -hmm. uh, also notice it's got some hand molding on the sides. And it's a nice little piece. And this is what they would have stored the books in, mm -hmm. in the schoolhouse and the schoolmaster or the students would come out and get the books as they need them mm -hmm. and then put them back in here at the end of the day. And with the door on it, if the teacher moved to another school, they wouldn't have to repack them. They'd just pick up the bookcase. That's true. Uh, it also helps keep the books in better shape so the mm. rodents and insects won't yes. get to them as, as easily. This is a nice piece right here. So let's go back to the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop and I'll show you how to build this old school bookcase. It doesn't matter if you're using hand tools or machinery in your shop. You need to know the safe way to operate your equipment. Make certain you have the proper safety equipment, and most importantly, use your PPE. Be safe and enjoy your shop time. The historic bookcase from the One Room Schoolhouse in Jackson County I thought was really nice, and I'm gonna show you how I build a bookcase very similar to that. I'm going to start with some very wide buckeye. Now my joiner is 10 inches wide 
and the Buckeye is 12 inches wide. So I have two options. I can either rip the boards in half, face join them, plane them, and glue them back together, or I can make a jig to put the board through the planer so it'll be perfectly flat. So that's what I'm going to do. I started with a couple pieces of beach. I run them over the joiner to get a nice flat surface. And as you can see, I've got some screws here. And what I'm going to do, the board is laying flat on the workbench. So now here's the board with the runners in place. So now I'll take this over to the planer and run this through the planer and get me a nice flat surface. Okay, now that I've got the boards dimensioned, I'm ready to glue up the boards for the shelves. If you remember the sides and the top, I dimension those without ripping them. The shelf boards I ripped to make it easier to face joint. Now right before I ripped them, if you look on the edge, you'll see I put a mark and numbered them. So now when I put them back, I've got the correct pair together so the grain will line up and it'll look real good. So now it's just a matter of gluing it together. I have four of these to do. I'll show you how I do one. I like to spread the glue on both boards, both edges. And as you know, I just use my finger. I've always got my finger with me. Now these boards are thicker than what I need, so once I glue them together, I'll run them through the planer to get the exact thickness, and that'll help make the glue line disappear. I like to rub it together. Because I'm going to run this through the planer, I'm just going to wipe the glue off so it doesn't dull my blades. And then of course any glue residue on the surface gets planed away. Now that I've completed all the dados, now I need to create a rabbit. The shelling boards have been dimensioned to the correct size except for the thickness. I deliberately made them a little thick. I created a 13 16 dado. The shelving unit is thicker than that, so now I will run it through the drum sander to get it to the perfect thickness so it will fit the data. On the original, the two middle shelf boards had a relief cut on the front edge, and that was a feature that I liked. So I replicated that at the bandsaw and made some relief cuts and then the rip cut. And after I profiled the edge, I took it to the drum sander, sanded the edge, and I took it to the router table and profiled the edge. When I go to glue it up, I prefer to put glue on all of the dados. It takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it to ensure I get a good bond. 
Also like to wipe up any glue squeeze out. Get the surface wet. If there is any squeeze out when it clamps, it doesn't adhere bad. I use a mallet to align the shelves properly. I like using the K-body clamps. This carcass is so wide it takes several clamps. The K-body clamps are good because they apply good pressure, but more importantly, they help to align and square the carcass. After I have one side clamped, Turn it over and apply clamps to the other side. This ensures that the shelves make a good glue bond in the dado. Got to make sure the shelves are aligned properly where the face frame won't fit. And it does take a lot of clamps. Now you can see the bookcase is assembled, glued up. I'm going to set that aside. Now in the past, I've shown how to do face frames using uh, mortise and tenon joinery, loose tenon, mortise joinery, uh, biscuit joinery. So for this one, I thought I would show uh, dowel. This is a very old joint. It's a very strong joint. And the way I like to do it, I like to take a square and clamp it down to a flat surface. And I can take the style and hold it right against the square and my rail and just slide it right up and it matches perfectly. Because each one is different, I need to mark it. I've already drilled a hole in the styles. Now on a wide rail, it doesn't matter. But on the narrow rail like these, it does matter. So I offset the holes just slightly so they're not in the same grain. So that's gonna make it a little bit stronger. Now, in order to transpose this hole from the style to the rail, I'm using a little device called a, a center finder. They come in different sizes. And as you can see, these are the small ones, quarter inch. They fit right in there. Now this is where the square comes in handy need to make sure that the edges align properly. And now you can see the little indentations from the center finder. So now I just need to take that over here and drill through holes. Now to drill the hole, I've got the rail in the vise. I like using a brad point bit because it has a real good center point tape to mark the depth. And now it's just a matter of putting the point right in the little indentation, drilling straight down. Now I need to take my center Finders out. Take my dowels and insert. If you notice, these dowels are fluted. The reason they are fluted 
is so when they're inserted into the hole, the glue can come up the little channel and it will not build up pressure at the bottom of the hole. And it will also allow the gas to escape. Now if you don't buy the dowels already fluted, you can take a regular dowel pin and a pair of pliers and just create your own flutes. Okay, so now I'll just insert the dowels into the styles, take the rail and slide it right up on it. There it is. Now it's ready to glue and clamp in place. As you can see, I've already got the face frame glued onto the carcass. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there's two easy ways of doing it. One is to face nail it and the other is to glue and clamp it. I did not want the nails to detract from the beautiful grain, so I took the time to glue and clamp this in place. When I do that, I usually make the face frame about an eighth of an inch oversize, let it overhang a sixteenth of an inch on both sides, and then trim it with a uh, flush bit in the router. And let's give it a go and see what happens. Always wait for the router bit to stop before you lay it down. Perfect. I've got a real nice piece of butternut. It's eight quarter. I'm going to resaw it and book match it for the panel of the door. So the first thing I need to do is resaw it. I've already got the bandsaw set up, so I'm ready to resaw. It's very important when resawing to feed at a slow, steady pace. And when you get near the end, be sure and use a push pad. Push pad will protect your fingers. Nope. There you have it. I just got finished making the styles and rails on the shaper and I've already changed the cutter to a raised panel. Here's the raised panel that's book matched. Beautiful grain. I want the good side down. I like for the cutter to be below the table and come up. I'm going to bring this up in small increments, several passes. Because this is butternut, uh, it has a tendency to chip out, so I'm going to make several passes. I left the fence on it, but I pushed it way back, so I've got dust control. So now I'm ready to go. Now that I've got the front of it raised, I need to cut a relief on the back so that it will fit in the slot. So I'm going to lower my raised panel cutter and use the same cutter. Now I've got all the parts sanded, so I'm ready to assemble it. I've rounded over the corners of the panel. I'm going to take a little bit of wax and put just on the corner. So if I have any glue squeeze out, it's not going to stick. So the panel can float. That's very, very important. When gluing up the styles and rails, commonly known as cope and stick, you have a lot of glue surface, so you need to take your time and make sure all of the surfaces have adequate glue.
I like to use a brush to get the glue down into the little crevices. And I also like to have a paper towel with a little bit of water to wipe up any glue squeeze out. Then it's just a matter of assembling the unit. And then it's ready to clamp. I like using K-body clamps. They not only apply a good pressure, but they are also self-aligning and squaring. And I prefer to use my hands to determine when the edges are flush, so I get a perfectly square door. And of course, clean up all of the glue squeeze out. Most of the guys in the Appalachian area carry a pocket knife and I have found that a pocket knife is very valuable to get the glue squeezed out in the tight corners and I always have one in my pocket. They're very handy. Now it's just a matter of letting the glue dry. And there you have it. Now I'm ready to hang the door and the first thing I want to do is put the hinges on the door. So the way I like to do it, I like to take the hinge Lay it on there, take a knife and mark the edges. And with a chisel, chisel out a little V groove right at the edge there. I've got it in a vise. I take my trim bit, set the depth of the bit to the thickness of one of the leaves on the hinge. And now I'm ready to route. And I just freehand route close to the line and then clean the rest of it up with a chisel. And that leaves a wee little bit right next to the shoulder that I need to clean up with the chisel. back is made up of half inch buckeye that has been ship lapped. I just need to line it up and give it a quick shot. I've mixed up some uh, oil varnish blend and I'm going to apply that with a rag. I'll start, start with the door. Probably notice that I turned a little knob there out of walnut 
And when you put this on, you want to flood the surface and get as much of it on the surface as you can and let it soak in, especially to the end grain. Really brings out the rich collar of the butternut. See anywhere that it has soaked in, you want to go back and put some more right there. Buckeye is a pretty wood. It's an underutilized wood. It is a little on the soft side. Very pretty with the dark brown streaks through the creamy collar. Here's the completed Schoolmaster's bookcase. If you remember, the original was in a one-room schoolhouse in Jackson County, West Virginia. I made several changes. If you notice the raised panel, book-matched butternut, the frame and carcass is Buckeye, little turned walnut knob. I kept the cut back on the shelves because I like that little feature. This was a fun project. If you're interested in any information or plans on any of the items featured on the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop, just check out our website, AppalachianHeritageWoodshop.com. Remember, be proud of your Appalachian heritage.